The University of Richmond was founded in 1830 and moved to its current location in the 20th century. In the university's long history, black students have only been able to attend the university for the past 50 years. Before this, the university's policy of segregation has kept black people out from classes and even public areas such as the dining hall. Black life has often been ridiculed in the popular minstrel shows that were held on campus. Racist imagery, such as symbols of the Confederacy and the KKK, have been prevalent in the university's yearbook, The Web. All of these memories go to show that this university has not been a place for black people. In 1968, the first black undergraduate students started their freshman year. The university took its time with desegregation. The first three black undergraduate students paved the way for integration. These students were Barry Green, Madeith Malone, and Isabel Thomas Lassane. My name is Barry Green, and I graduated from the University of Richmond in 1972. The University of Richmond just kind of stuck out when I came here for an interview. It was um, more in line with the boarding school that I was leaving, and so it just kind of fit in, being close to home, and yet not having to stay at home. My name is Meredith Malone. I graduated in 1972 with degrees in theater arts and speech. I had a lot of friends from high school who came here. Um, when I applied, to various colleges, uh, this was a good fit when you looked at the overall curriculum for a liberal arts education. And so I decided to come here. You know, obviously, the, there were two young ladies over at West Hampton, but I um, didn't see them that often. I mean, I knew them by name when I saw them. I interviewed with the director of admissions, and it was Tom Pollard, uh, director of admissions and registrar at the time. Um, just interviewed. Um, no idea what the, um, the makeup of the student body was. I didn't ask that question. I really, truly wasn't concerned about that question. I guess I should have suspected something was up when the university said they didn't want me, they weren't going to let me live on campus at first, but then they, they changed their mind and I lived on campus after they interviewed who was going to be my roommate. I didn't really need to live on campus because I was so close. However, during the years I was here, if I needed to stay on campus, uh, I had the uh, friends that would let me stay on North Court or South Court if I needed to spend the night because of theater rehearsals, things like that. I was going to be the first black to live on campus, and they weren't sure, I'm, I'm thinking or guessing, that they weren't sure how I was going to be accepted living on campus. My roommate happened to have been a junior uh, majoring in religion who lived in Martinsville, Virginia. Be my roommate, you had to go through an interviewing process. so. The, the students were interviewed to see who was going to be my roommate. And I guess he's the one that won the lottery and got to have me as his roommate. The only place I ever lived, third floor Freeman Hall, all four years. You know, um, had a roommate each year other than my senior year. I chose to live in a single. When I, my junior year, I joined the um, fraternity. Other than that, I wasn't involved in much of anything on campus. At the time it was Phi Sigma Delta and then it switched to ZBT, Zeta Beta Tau. They were always the ones that would um, most of the time invite me to sit at the um, dining room table with them when I go in for dinner or lunch, things like that. I, you know, they would always invite me to come over versus seeing me sitting at a table um, by myself in most cases. They'd invite me to join them. There was somebody that was reaching out, being friendly and inviting me to join them. People who were the friendliest to me were in the theater department. I guess it's because people in the arts are always open to everyone. They don't look at uh, necessarily what you look like as opposed to what you can add to the production. I, I majored in biology, so obviously I was taking a lot of science and math and things like that, I mean, but um, it was just, um, the usual studying and trying to get through and get a decent grade. Some classes you, you, you have to study harder than others to, um, to be successful in them. I, I joined the theater department as soon as I got here, not necessarily intending to major in theater, but because that was an interest of mine. I had a really good time, good friends, um, switched majors a couple of times and finally settled on um, theater and speech. Um, got to travel uh, with the Glee Club, 
uh, travel with the players. Uh, every year we would take a trip to New York and see Broadway shows and visit various places and get to, get to meet a lot of people that I probably would not have met had I gone to a different school. I didn't look at being the first of anything. I never have looked at being the first. It's never crossed my mind that I would be the first black living on campus here. But as far as me, I, I, I just never looked at it as, um, you know, making history. The first three students paved the way for integration, and the years following were about black students finding space for themselves. Clubs that were specific to black students popped up, as well as black Greek life. The Student Organization for Black Awareness, referred to as SOBA, was the first black student organization and was created because black students felt that social life for them was lacking. The first black fraternity wasn't established until 1980, and black sororities came onto campus in the 90s. Black students often played a role in helping to recruit more black students to the university, and black students have also started advocating for more black faculty. Many of the structures and organizations we see today were all created around this time, though integration wasn't always easy. With a small university population, the number of black students has always seemed small, and students often easily knew each other. Here at the university for a little over 31 years, and during that time, I have uh, held various uh, positions or various titles. The time I came to the University of, Realize, of Richmond, I realized that before you make changes, you need to have a sense of the community. You need to get a sense of what things are working and what things are not working. So, just about every day, you would see me having lunch with students in the the cafeteria. The university wanted to enroll a greater number of African-American students. I realized that there was a task to be, to be uh, done to uh, promote a more positive image of the university. I can quote my father. My father is 90. He said, back in his day, you know, black people couldn't ride through here. We couldn't come to the far west end. Uh, or you'd be stopped. Well, I visited campus for the very first time during a weekend where they decided, let's bring in all of the prospective freshmen uh, or, or those looking at the school, rather, to come in for a weekend. We had, they had a nice uh, celebration. All of the African-American students had an event that Friday night um, to celebrate, and so I came in just for that particular weekend, and then I had a chance to look at the school while I was here. Uh, I was there to help develop programs like MOVE, where students would come to campus, students from high schools, and we primarily focused on students within the city of Richmond, would come to campus, would spend a weekend, would get to know others, we would develop all kinds of opportunities for them to learn about some of the, the great things that the university had to offer. Uh, and then I would follow them after they left the university. After my parents dropped me off and left me, it was a little bit of a, a shock for me because when I came down that weekend and I saw other black students, uh, when they left me at the dorm and I realized that I was the only you know, black student at the dormitory, I was in a little bit of a, I think I was a little shocked. I guess I would say I was a little bit shocked. I felt confident in my decision to come here. And then everyone else showed up. And that's when I realized, honestly, just how white this school was. My first impression at that point was, wow, this isn't what I thought, because every other experience, whether it was back then, I think it was called Multicultural Awareness Weekend, and we came for that weekend, and there were so many black people here for that weekend that it really gave, I guess like, not that it was bad, but it was a false impression of what it was like to really be here and to be settled on campus and living here. Ultimately, we realized that that wasn't enough. That, that that was a start, but that wasn't enough. Because again, U of R had a reputation that we needed to alter a bit. In my freshman class, there were three black females, and I believe maybe three or four black male. All of the black people were so few and far between at that point. I remember there being right around 100 or less than 100 black students. So I remember my freshman year, I think it was like eight black women and then two lived off campus. 
And so we remember joking about, it's just six of us here now. And so <laughs> I had to get accustomed to the fact that there wasn't really a social life here for me. And a lot of, most of the student population enjoy going to the fraternities, for instance. And I tried going there a few times and I was like, this is not my scene at all. So that was challenging. And so coming to terms with the fact that, okay, I can get a great education here, but socially, I'm probably going to struggle. With that isolation, there's a desire to, to get more out of a campus experience beyond an academic degree. I think they want to have a good time. I think they want to have places that they can go, people that they can see. Um, from a dating standpoint, I think there is loneliness in terms of just having fun meeting somebody that you care about. So I think there's a little loneliness there. So for the social life, uh, most of what we did was going to games and you know, celebrating um, whatever uh, sport it was. You know, one of the reasons why I think ours was focused around sports was because there were so few of us that we really couldn't have that much of a party you know, the, our, the group really didn't have that much of a party because it may have been three or four ladies and 20 uh, athletes, because most of the African-American men here at the time were athletes. And so they ended up taking us in as sisters, little sisters. So we didn't really have that much fun, uh, you know, party type time. Our social life really was going to the games. Coming to terms with the fact that, okay, I can get a great education here, but socially, I'm probably going to struggle. The social aspect of college is something that I feel like I've missed out on significantly because I don't have stories or the close connections that my friends who went to HBCUs or historically black college and universities actually have or the rich connection to homecoming and other events or just all these great memories of just what it was like to be on the weekends. Everyone had something to look forward to as far as going to the fraternities or most, most people. We just didn't have that to look forward to. We had to find it or try and create it in our own circles. Two years, I was in the liberal arts school. And so I took a lot of Spanish and religion and you know courses, psychology, courses that were sort of light. But then once I applied to the business school, it was rough. <laughs> it was very rough, but I knew that I wanted to major in business and I wanted to concentrate on the marketing side. And so I got into the business school and had some challenges there. I felt most excluded in the business school, which was difficult for me because I wanted to major in business. And I actually had an internship with a major bro brokerage company here in town. And one of the events that happened on a, I'm not gonna say continuous, but more than once, was me attempting to tell my professors that I had this cool internship with a brokerage company. And none of them was ever interested in that. I began mentoring networks, realizing that our population of, um, of diverse uh, staff and faculty was so small that I needed others to encourage students to move forward in one particular major or another, recognizing that there were opportunities for them as well. So I applied at the University of Richmond um, as a whim. I wanted the position. I thought it was an interesting position. But for some reason, I didn't think I would be hired. I've had student workers who have never had any interaction with black people at all, and very timid around me at the beginning. And then by the time that they graduate, they were like, it was interesting getting to know you and knowing your life and um, thinking about me as a, as a friend and not of someone of color. The university's reputation as an all-white private liberal arts institution has stuck over the years, despite the growing number of minority students. Black students are less than 10% of the population, and most students know each other. In the past 50 years, the university has grown and transformed, changing what the student experience is like. Students still complain about the lack of diversity at the university. It is common to go to class and be the only black student, or one of very few. There are more organizations dedicated to black students that are thriving, such as the Black Student Association. 
Students today can express their feelings with other black students, knowing that they aren't the only ones. Racist incidents are not just an issue of the 20th century, as black students still face similar incidents today. There might not be pictures of students in KKK outfits or an official Confederate spider mascot walking around, but racism has evolved in more ways that are subtle, in ways that can be so covert that people don't think racism and discrimination exist. My attention was the fact that at that time, which was this would have been fall of 2014, um, they, had, uh, they had really done a good job of increasing the diversity of the student body with respect to race, but also with respect to class. I mean, the, the, in 2007, the Pell Grant eligible students were 9%, and by, that, by, by 2014, it was like 15, 14%. And students of color, same thing, from 11% to 23, 24%. So that really, that was impressive to me. Um, and everything else, you know, great academic programs, terrific professors, um, uh, I, I, that was enough to pique my interest. I came to University of Richmond because, number one, I fell in love with the campus. I came to the University of Richmond because I really felt a tight connection with the school when I first searched it out and looked at the web page. I saw a lot of interesting programs that I was interested in joining, and I just felt that um, the University of Richmond would be a good fit for me and my interests at the time. Well, I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana, so deciding to come to the University of Richmond was definitely a hard choice since I didn't know whether I would want to be 10 hours away or not. However, I wanted to go to a smaller to medium-sized liberal arts institution. In Richmond, I'm on the football team. Yeah, with football, it takes up a lot, a lot of time. Um, they say it's only supposed to take 20, 25 hours, but it definitely takes 30 to 35, I would say, um, on any given week. How do I, I balance everything? It's just pay attention in class. <laughs> it's just I try to get, learn as much as I can while I'm in class because I know I'm not going to have as much time outside of class to study those things. And, um, so I major in business administration, and then I concentrate in finance and economics. I'm here, I have felt very excluded at times, especially being a black woman in the business school where there's no one who looks like me. Um, it can be very lonely at times, and seeing in my classes where I'm the only black woman, the only black person in the business school. Okay, my feeling towards the business school is that every time I walk by the business school, I feel like it is not the place I ever want to go. Like, it's not a place where... I belong, I've never had a class in business school. Until right now, I have my wellness class in the business school. And even yesterday, like, um, which is what my class was, going into the business school was like such a, a weird feeling for me. Doing in mathematics and economics. We're from friends um, that sometimes the business school is intimidating, um, that it's largely white male, and that they sometimes feel that they have to dress up just in order to go into the building. Yeah, so my freshman year in the business school, it was hard. Um, in my classes, I kind of noticed that students gravitated away from me. So when I would sit down in classes, um, like first day, I would see a lot of people like cling towards each other. Maybe they had, they went to high school together. Maybe they already knew each other. But with me, I would kind of sit and everyone would move away from me and not talk to me. When I walk through the doors of the business school, there is a different vibe than the rest of the campus. Yeah. So being an outsider in the business school, it did make me think initially about changing my major. Um, I kind of thought, okay, there I see a lot of my friends in the sciences. What if I, you know, change my major to that? But then I realized that um, business is my passion, and I really do like finance, and I don't want to change what I want to do just because of how I feel temporarily at this school, because I know that the way I feel at this school isn't going to be the way that I feel forever. And so as a result, I decided to stick in the business school. Um, and I didn't have time for any other majors or minors, so I just had to tough it out, and I'm still here. What I would say about the Richmond students, what we have found is that they're, you know, they're, 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 they're kind, they're thoughtful, they're ambitious, uh, they're curious and, and intelligent. I would say I'm happy here. Um, I've found a good friend group, and I think that's really important, especially at a small university like this. Even though it is small, finding that small subgroup of, like, friends um, helps keep you to keep yourself together. Like works well for me here. Um, definitely like my friends, they're like my rocks like getting me through here. I 
gravitated towards other people who look like me, so I gravitated towards my other black friends, but there's only so many of them on this campus. And so as a result, in white communities, I kind of felt like I didn't belong. And um, that was a kind of a hard feeling to have to deal with while also adjusting to college academics and being around a lot of new people. For students like me at UR, having a support group is very important, especially considering um, Sometimes, like depending on the student and where they're from, coming to the University of Richmond can be a bit of a shock from a cultural or a social aspect that they're not used to being in such an environment. Tell you, the few times that I will come onto this campus, I, I, I rarely see a black student. I'm walking. Um, and so and in, in 1968, you, unless you got a glimpse of me, you probably would not have seen a black student on campus then either. I mean, it used to be I knew every single black person, black student on campus. Now, when I walk around campus, I realize I don't know half of them. I don't even know a third of them. Um, and it's nice to see that when I walk into a room, I'm not the only black face that I see. Inclusion would mean that, like, all professors and faculty get some form of like diversity awareness training and sort of um, make sure that like they are sort of held responsible for like anything that they may do that may that may sort of make other students not feel as comfortable being here at this university or make students feel left out. There have been times that I've felt uncomfortable with things that either students or faculty have said. I mean, unfortunately though, the matter of the fact is there are white people who don't care to learn about other cultures right. and other people. And I think that's something that you realize here that there are those people who okay. really, they live in their own bubble, they live in their own circle and that's how they want to be. Right. Yeah. Certain things that the university says that they focus on, I feel like they don't live up to what, to the standards that they've set for themselves and praise themselves on and have been praised for. I think a lot of times uh, the university contradicts itself. Um, like a lot of the initiatives that they say they are for or that they support, their actions sometimes do not back those things up. And for me, that's really problematic, um, especially when a lot of times I'm chosen as kind of that person to speak at an event or kind of represent the University of Richmond. Because while I f I'm, you, I'm always honored to play that role, but sometimes I feel that, like, am I representing the university because they legitimately believe that I'm, you know, a good student with, like, a lot to offer, or is it because they want to show that they have diversity? Here and just in general, like, I feel like we're, as black women, we're, like, constantly battling, like, staying true to, like, our identity, but then also, try, like, like respectability politics exactly. that, like, come with being a black woman. Exactly. So, like, stereotypes, like, you don't want to... It's all you're always thinking about, like, oh, like, try not to feed into this, like, especially here, because, and like, how we're, people, other yeah. people perceive you, how people perceive you, you're like, oh, like, I don't want to feed into the stereotype, mm -hmm. like, at the same time, like, this is, like, who I am. Like, you're really sort of thrown into a pool of, like, adversity, and you sort of learn more about what it means to be a minority and what it means to be excluded from the social scene. The university's reputation has changed. It's changed a lot over my 35 years. Um, it's now perceived as still a distinguished university, but now it's perceived that anyone can go here. Having black students at the university is an important thing, but making sure that these students feel included at the university is even more important. Students deserve to feel that they belong at the institution where they plan on studying as an undergrad. All of the black students have different stories and perspectives, but the one commonality between them is that they have all attended the same university. All of these voices must be listened to in order to fully integrate. Diverse, a black student experience.